Hey Cam, appreciate you having me out at the workout this morning. We're in Andorra. Yeah. Beautiful track, beautiful scenery. How's yeah. things? Well, yeah, I mean, how could it not be good? Yeah. Look at this place. Look at this place. It's pretty, uh, <laughs> pretty spectacular. It's, uh, you know, it's one of the more kept secret places, even though everyone's known about it for a while. But yeah, yeah. as you can see by caliber of athletes this morning. Yeah, yeah. We've got the same guys uh, that you were running with last week on the long run, Sam and Hayden doing yeah, a different workout. Exactly, but they'll obviously do quite a different, they're actually, they're actually training today. Yeah, yeah. The other day, <laughs> <laughs> just having a nice little jog, so yeah. it was nice to have some social time, but uh, today I'll, uh, I'll actually do the session with Hanny, yep. with Hayden's girlfriend, who's... Uh, an ITU, female ITU athlete, so yep. they're running, I guess, around that 32 minute, 31, 32, 10k pace is uh, about my limit, so uh, yeah, sure. she's actually the perfect uh, training partner for me for, yep. I guess, this uh, faster stuff. I guess nothing I do is overly fast. <laughs> yeah, sure. We were training for the, for the Ironman World Champs coming up in, uh, how long have you got now? Yeah, so I've got... Uh, Six weeks, seven weeks. Seven weeks? Yeah. Next uh, next five weeks are probably the most important time of the year? Yeah, probably, yeah. At least yeah. the next four. Yeah. Start to uh, flush out a bit of the, fat the fatigue before. Yeah. And correct me if I'm wrong, I think I saw a 40k long run the other day at uh, about four minute pace. I actually did 41. 41? Okay. <laughs> and did a K to cool down, but yeah. didn't record that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you recovered. You you recovered reasonably well from that. That was was it Saturday? Yeah, I mean. And it's Wednesday today. It was pretty funny because the next day I did uh, nearly six hours with uh, Geraint Thomas, Filippo Garner, yeah, uh, Lawrence Plus, Pavel Sivakov, the guys getting ready for the Vuelta. So. Okay. But by the time I turned up to the ride, the next day, I'd already had another run and swam twice. <laughs> So I'd done three sessions between that marathon and uh, so yeah. Massive weekend. Not really, that's a pretty standard weekend. No, it's weekend. an all weekend. Yeah. Okay, okay. Because then Sunday, same thing, did some uh, efforts on the bike. Yep. With uh, Josh Tarling. Yep. A new young, young super rocket this year. Yep. And uh, another good hard hill sprint threshold run after that. So, yep. Yeah, I mean, those kind of runs need to be comfortable. Yeah. If you're burying yourself to do that, then yeah, you can't expect to back up and do it. Be able to do it in an Ironman. Yeah, you know? exactly. Exactly. So it's not about trying to kill yourself in that that long run. It's about trying to make that relative effort yep. feel comfortable. So on race day, when you get off the bike after 180k, and you might be a bit under pressure, you can just go and deliver. Yep. Exactly. So. Yeah, that's a type of workout I'll probably do three or four times before the world. Okay. Yep. Sounds good. We'll continue to warm up and then uh, find out what the session is. Yeah. 123. Oh, 113. 13. Sorry. 13. <laughs> They're probably thinking like, like what the fuck? What's going on? Got a coordination for me, trust me. <laughs> for a, for, for a, roller, a roller slash cyclist, this is very coordinated. What is this? <laughs> uh oh, here we go. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Just try it. What was that? I'm not sure what that was. It was Some bounds, I think. There was an attempt at a bounding. <laughs> yeah, I think there, there used to be like running jumps or something, but. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Special. He's ready now. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. Right, I'm into it. So, 4K. Yeah. Okay. Um, you want to switch each K for 10 yeah. laps or something? Yeah, you go first so I know the first. Because yeah. I'm not very good with that. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> I'll do yeah. my best. Let's see where these boys are at. Let's see. And then, I assume the cone's in the right spot over there. Well, it's right? Andorra. Oh, it's hey, it's working. Who cares? Three. Yeah. Hopefully it's slightly long. That's why he's running so <laughs> <Yeah>. fast. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely won't be. You ready? Yeah. Alright, stop talking, Hannah. Let's go. I'm not going to talk to you anymore. <laughs> Four. 
Four and four eleven. After this, well, I was going to do 12 or 10 12s, yeah. but if I've done 4k, I guess now I do 7 12s. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. But that was obviously really nice to have, yeah, to have a bit of a, some company. Yeah, exactly. I felt a bit like an a, a hole. Sitting there Ernie. Like... Sorry, Ernie, <laughs> I was just trying to keep the pace. <laughs> And in the 12s, are you shooting for a certain effort or a Same certain... Same sort of uh, base, like... Yep, just about I basically do it off cadence, like I okay. try and average around 180 cadence. Right. And... Um, off Is that relating to Ironman pace? No, it's or? sort of relating to what we think my flat marathon might be. Gotcha. So, you know, I think maybe I could maybe run a 230 if I trained, yep. maybe just under, so that's around 330. 320 something pace, yep. which for me tends to sit around 180 cadence. I just find it easier to look at cadence sure. as a measurement because sure. I didn't grow up running on the track, so I don't know times and yeah. all of that. Sure. So, do you have on your watch face the yeah, cadence? Yeah, cadence, yeah. Okay, interesting. Right, same right. with like Penny then, I was just like watching the cadence behind her and then just tried to keep the same. Yeah, sure. Okay. 1200. Yeah. After the boys' 6k tempo, which is yep. under three-minute pace, what are they what are they doing now? Oh, so now they're doing uh, eight 200s with 200 float yep. uh, recovery. So starting out at about 30 seconds, and then Sam will probably build down maybe like 26, 27 to the last couple. So. Yeah, okay. and just 200 float yep. jog between. You were saying before I asked, I was curious to know, uh, and I asked Cam actually if he agreed with your uh, sub 28-minute 10k potential, <laughs> and he said. Well and surely he reckons they could go under yeah, yeah. under 28 if they race a 10k. Absolutely. Because they just cruised uh, yeah, 259s for a threshold run, so yeah. Really yeah, good yeah. No, they definitely um, definitely be sorry, definitely be capable of that. I think. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Three down? Yeah. Four to go? Nice. Almost halfway. Almost halfway. Feeling pretty good? One more to the halfway to go. Yeah. Over halfway. You were saying yeah, off, off camera before that uh, you haven't done a whole <laughs> lot of measuring of lactate or VO2 or anything. Super curious just to hear a quick uh, quick thought on that because a whole lot of triathletes are sort of really I guess when we're talking, we're relating more to cycling. Yep. Um, in running, I've done some stuff in Portland, obviously, with the guys because I was starting from scratch. So, yep. having those parameters has been quite invaluable. Okay. But, um, but yeah, I mean, in cycling, it's a bit different, isn't it? Because in a in a running race, well, relatively speaking, you're kind of in your own lane, so it's quite controlled, a bit like swimming. Mm. You know, is what you need to do. You mm. know, you got to go this fast. And as I said in that podcast with Rich Roll, like these guys will break a world record in training and that's how they know they can go and do it on race day. Yep, yep. Um, in cycling, you're racing all these other people so you actually don't know what you're going to have to do. You know, you've got to go as fast as the guy in front or at least try to. So I guess Tim Kerrison's method was a bit similar to his rowing days where it was, you know, you can get from A to B, you know, in a certain certain time. We've just got to figure out how to, you know, you, 
you just got to figure out how to do that. Yeah. And so whatever that power is, whatever that cadence is, etc., you got to be able to do that. So in theory, the numbers don't matter because if you can't do it, you don't win the race. <laughs> simple. Yeah. And so he adopted his training more around that than uh, measuring, yeah, lactates or fatigue levels or anything like that. It was more a practical approach, I guess. Yeah, 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 sure. And it was quite successful for a very long time. Yeah, absolutely. What's your preferred uh, Two to go. carb drink during? It's just electrolytes. Okay. Yeah. Stir basic one. I think yeah. uh, having a having a sweat experience. I I might be wrong, but I think the science is pretty good for trying to separate those two. Yep. I tend to unless it's a bike race where you know it's crosswinds raining and you're trying to. We can chase after Pogacar for climb or something. <laughs> <laughs> Try and refrain yeah. from having too much sugar in my bottles when, uh, okay. you know, situation like that in a bike race, you don't really have. It's a stupid. Sounds stupid, but putting your hand in your pocket, and everything's quite hard. But you need to drink because yep. obviously, hydration. You know, you can come back from lack of fuel, but you can't come back from lack of hydration. So, right. You obviously need to drink. So. Uh, yeah. Sure. You put sugar in your bottles sometimes bike racing, but. Yeah. You feel like you don't need them in a workout like this. No running or. Yeah. Um, or uh, yeah, running basically, or in an Ironman, I always separate them. So. Okay. Yeah. So you, did you convince the Kiwi guys to come and live here? Or? Of course I did, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I've been sort of wanting, obviously I'd love to have some people train. I've got plenty of cyclists here and yeah. that's been great. But, uh, I, you know, I've been wanting some triathletes to train with. And obviously training partners are a pretty unique thing, you know. You, you sort of have to have a, 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 the right balance of relationship. And, yep. and uh, I spoke to Hayden at the Super League in uh, Malibu. When uh, obviously he gave, well, he and everyone else gave me a hiding, but uh, <laughs> we talked about Andorra and especially also setting yourself up in Europe uh, you know, with residency is important. Yep. I think for the young guys, it just gets them settled yep. and uh, they don't have to stress about visas and yeah. overstaying time and all of that. And yeah. Yep. I said to Hayden, he's going to have a great career and a long career, and you want to maximize that and getting settled in Europe is really important. And just from his attitude, and we got along well, I just felt like he'd. Really, be really comfortable here and you know it's, he, he it's loves it you, you can tell he absolutely loves it and he's got his mate here Sammy now training too yeah yeah loves it here and so we've yeah we've now got a really good little mix yeah awesome I love it it just motivates you know having people like that around you for sure last one last one <laughs> Got done. Good job. You uh, hit the objective, I guess, of the cadence, and was the pace sort of what you thought it would be, or is that just no concern? Like yeah, the no. The, well, the pace sort of happens with the cadence, but yep. the key is consistency. And I think I was 410, 411, 408, basically all of them. So that's the key. Yeah, yep. It's more of a motor pattern yep. exercise than all out killing yourself. Yeah, sure. Obviously, the last one. Gave it a bit of a tweak. Yeah. It was a bit under four minutes for that one, but nice. that was uh, also a good indication that I'd done it within myself. Yeah, yeah, for sure. What's um, the rest of the day look like? So now 
have a little break. We'll meet at the pool a couple of hours, yep. swim for an hour or so, I guess. Yep. And then uh, a second run, well, weights first, the gym. So uh, some strength work, and then a second easy run, um, just with a bit of speed work in there. Yep. <coughs> and that's today, so today's more of a run specific yeah, sure. day. Yep. And, uh, yeah, I do a couple of them a week, so it's this running day and then the long running day are the two run specific days. Yeah, Wednesday, Saturday? Wednesday and Friday. Friday, okay. And then, uh, yeah, four days, obviously, where I'm on the bike yep. as well. And the runs were a lot shorter yep. and not very build run. There's a hill sprint today, but, but generally the bikes are focused on those days. Okay, sure. Or the swimming. Yeah, I never do hard sessions in. Sometimes I do a hard session on the bike and a semi-hard run, but uh, I'll never do like, you know, a really hard session in two sports on the same day. Okay, sure. I'll try to give each sport the respect it deserves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In Ironman now we've got people that are quite exceptional in everything so <laughs> it's no longer acceptable to be you know maybe have a weapon and be crap at the other two you've got to be quite good at everything and and hopefully have a weapon in one of them <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> sports moved on a lot yeah. so cam you're a hbmn <laughs> athlete taker uh yeah is so that obvious is it <laughs> <laughs> So I've been taking the ketones, I'm a fan, so yeah. how do you incorporate them into your sort of daily routine and into your training and racing? Yeah, well obviously I use it as a loading or a stack, stacking before the day, so if like a hard day today, like quite intense. I'll have two shots in the morning, yep. which um, basically just what I found helps me utilise the fuel that I ingest. Yep. Um, but then today, because I just had that quite hard run and I'm going swimming next, this year I've found the cognitive benefits, particularly with swimming, yeah. um, you know, I've just been swimming much better. I've noticed every swim I'm just concentrating all the time on my technique, which is something I haven't done in the past. And mm -hmm. the only real change I've made is having the ketone IQ, where there's lots of evidence of uh, the cognitive benefits. But also now we're going swimming, I don't really feel like eating a big amount, but I kind of need fuel because I just had quite a hard run and yeah. need to swim. So obviously you get the, um, yeah, you know, the fueling benefits of this, plus the cognitive benefits, and, uh, you know, I can probably just have a, a, a couple of gels, um, and that's quite easy on the stomach, and I'll have plenty of energy to get through my swim, so, yeah, it's um, always used as a, as a loading, and then uh, super, super hard days at the end of the day, I'll be using it for recovery, but um, when I have, you know, swimming, you know, during the day, like when I don't have that first up, I'll always have IQ beforehand just as a... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Enhance yeah. the brain fog from yeah. the fatigue of the session before. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> cool. Well, oh, thanks for sharing. Mm.